Eamon Khan here, four seconds out in London with Johnny Nelson. Johnny, I was looking at you, you always look smart, you always look flash, that sort of thing, but you've got a shirt on that's taken my eye. I'm just gonna, what, what's the shirt? Oh, this old thing. I just thought I'd just play, just play with everybody else. Uh, so I don't know what you're talking about. It's just something I picked up, it was on the side. Are you, are they for sale? Are they? You know what? I might actually start selling them. That's a good shout that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah give me a call. <laughs> I think you might make a few quid off of that. It's a good idea, no, uh, nonetheless, leaning into the idea, but great card this weekend, Sunday of all days as well too. Uh, just talk me through the card from top to bottom. What takes your eye specifically? You know, any of these fights would, could, could possibly be a, a headline if not achieve support. I think this, to me, in my opinion, this is the best card boxers have done from top to bottom. Uh, because each fight has got a story, each fight has got jeopardy, each fight has got something about him. Fraser Clark against Wardley, you look at that, you think Fraser's got all the experience, has all the pedigree, everything done, but he's not got the professional experience to go in with a guy that's been a white collar fighter that has a professional experience. Just because you're a good amateur doesn't make you a good pro. This is, we know who Fabio is, know what he's like as a professional. We don't know what Fraser's like as a professional. So Fraser, if Fraser goes by form, Fraser should have enough to get the job done. He's bigger, he's more uh, boxing, he's got better boxing IQ. Uh, so therefore, you just need to transfer that to the professional game. Fraser has sparred with the best. He's sparred with AJ, he's sparred with Joe Joyce, box all these, all these he big heavyweights you see them all over the world. Fraser's been in with them, so that's why he's got the confidence to say, I'll do you. He's just got to transfer that into the fight. So now, for the first time, he probably dislikes having to be in this position against really a white collar fighter and that's what he's thinking you're just a lucky white collar fighter but in, in reality he needs to respect uh, Fabio if he respects him stick to what he's good at and don't think I'm too good for you, too good for you then he could get the job done but great fight surely when I look at it from the outside looking in there's heaps of pressure on Fraser's shoulders more so even though that Wardley is the defending the British heavyweight title Fraser having all the criticism about his performances so far if he loses this fight a lot of people are going to rubbish him and, and really write him off no, no, listen, he's still learning. He's still, he's still a pup when it comes to our professional game. And as they say, the pros aren't, it's not the same as the... Um... Do you think the fans will afford him that? No, no, he won't. I think Fabio played a blinder and the gloves are off by actually heaping that pressure on him. Saying, you know, all the stuff you need to go around telling all the amateurs that represent our country it means jack shit if you lose to me. So, um, so uh, he's under pressure. And so even though Fabio's the one that's, that's 17 fights unbeaten, knocking 16 of them out. Oh, I think it's 18 pounds and be knocking 17 out. He, he's a guy that knows that I can always say, look, I'm a white collar fighter. I just, you know, I'm willing on the job. So he's got nothing to lose. It's a win-win for him. Moving on to uh, Ben Whitaker, someone who as well gets uh, some shade thrown at him for his, for his style. And you are someone as well that during your career, people threw the same sort of criticisms around, around you, but you stay true to your style. Do you feel that it's important for Ben to stick and stay away from the criticism and keep to what he's doing? Let's be clear, I was nowhere near as exciting as Ben, and that's fact. <clears throat> the fact is, you know, I stuck to my style of fighting, you're an orthodox, uh, um, annoyed your opponent, annoys the fans, annoys the, the managers and promoters, but he gets the job done. Ben has got a, a, a formula, an ingredient that is successful, and if he takes that, up in levels with him, at European level, at world level. He takes that up in levels with him, this guy will be an absolute trailblazer. Just like Naz was. You know, at this stage, people said, yeah, he's this, that, and the other, but he took it up again, took it up a notch, took it up a notch. Remember when he was Kevin Kelly? You know, and, and, if, and if, if Ben can take those performances up with him as he moves up in class, again, we can stay excited. And it's great to see that on the world stage. At the moment, we're seeing it on the national stage. We want to see it on an international stage. Where are you siding on the 50-50 between Florian Marco and Chris Congo? That's a tough fight. I think uh, Chris Congo needs to put boxing pressure on, on Marco. Don't give me space to think. Florian Marco is a good fighter, not a better boxer. Congo's got to put him under pressure as a boxer. Make him work, make him think. Make, it, make him think under pressure. Don't give him time to think. If he does that, he gets to win. If he gets sucked in, Ego gets the better of him. And it always happens when you box Marco because he's a very, he's, he's such an alpha male. So you want to just chest up to him and say, I'll give you some of that. If he does that, he'll lose. So just moving away from this card, got lots of time throughout the week to talk through it on another occasion. But I just want to get your thoughts on maybe the, the war of words between maybe Adam Azim and Dalton Smith and 
maybe Adam Zoom side not really engaging with means in the public eye, they're losing that battle. What do you think Adam's about that? Adam's not that kind of guy. Adam wants to do his talking in the ring when the, when the bell goes. I was there when, when Dalton Smith put on such an amazing performance and this guy's a fully rounded fighter getting better and better. I thought he was brilliant. I thought he worked really well. Adam, he's still learning on the job, but to say he's not experienced enough, look at where he is. So when this young man knows exactly what he's got to do, and he's got the experience, he makes him even more dangerous. So you've got an experienced fighter that's confident in all his ability and an inexperienced fighter that's still getting, being successful and getting to the levels he's getting. I think he, that fight, that road when they cross will be an amazing road to cross. But right now, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably ignore the G saying, come on, let's do this now. I probably wouldn't, common sense tells me. Get two or three more fights in the belt, Adam. I probably wouldn't do that after seeing, um, after seeing uh, Dublin on Saturday night. Moving forward as well too, it seems that like one half of Boatsy versus Yard has agreed their side, the other half is still negotiating. Uh, look, we, a fight we really want to see, but Boatsy versus Yard, do you feel that maybe that might fall from the way? I don't know, because I heard Yard's, you know, more or less signed a deal with Smith now, you know, so it's, it's back and forth, so it's up in the air, it's a fight we'd like to see, it's a fight I'm quite sure we will see eventually, if he doesn't have next, I'll have that straight after that. We just got to wait, uh, just got to wait, of course it's going to happen. In amongst all the matching 5v5, Anti Joshua put out a post saying he's got the call, they want me to fight, he's got the call. He seems like he might be out, or at least he's teasing something heavily, maybe a red herring, but activity being key for Joshua. If he was back out soon, who do you want it to be against? I don't think Anti Joshua is going to hang about and wait for, um, uh, for the outcome of a Tyson Fury and Usyk, because he obviously sees activity at a certain level. It's good for him, it rounds him, makes him confident in what he's doing. So he's right at this stage now to say, right, then keep doing that. Get me fighters that are going to make me think, get, get me out there, get, keep me busy. Uh, who will pick, I don't know. Um, I think I think AJ, the guy, will say how it is. His people around him are the ones that will throw the red herrings out. So uh, if you hear it from his mouth, it's probably going to happen. Uh, but it's business, isn't it? You've got to wait and see. So do you still think that with the confidence that's rose now from AJ that he's still the type of fighter that needs specific guiding to maybe avoid certain fights and take other fights where maybe harder tasks might arise? Well, sometimes you've got to win a, uh, lose a battle to win a war. So there's certain fights you can take, uh, there's certain fights that you, pop, you might win, you might not win. Uh, and there's certain risks you're going to take or you think, well, what's my ultimate goal? You know, is this a done deal? How many times have they nearly boxed tights in Fury? It's never happened. So he, he's not foolish enough to get sucked into you know, put his own, putting all his eggs in one basket, you know, and making his career be guided by that. So he's going to pick fights that suit him and keep him on the road as far as he's concerned back to the top. You might have thought that he might be fighting Philip Hergovic, but it seems like Daniel Dubois is doing that. You feel that Dubois is ready for a test like Hergovic? He has to be. You know, he, Daniel Dubois, you know, he's, 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 he's been in the fights. We've seen him win, we've seen him lose. Daniel Dubois needs to step up to the next level now to see if he has really got the ability. We saw him getting there with Usyk. Usyk just, you know, he, he had success, uh, but he showed naivety as well. So now he's, he needs to, you know, put himself in a position where people respect him seriously, you know, as a top 10 heavyweight. I saw that Lawrence Okoli in amongst obviously going for the Bridgeweight title. He's targeted a fight with Dylan White. Do you feel that's a fight that uh, entices you to want to see that? It might be a messy fight with Lawrence you know, Estelle. I gather, I don't know if I'm right or not, I gather those two have crossed swords in Spine before, so I'm quite sure Lawrence Okoli fancies that. And I'm quite sure Lawrence Okoli, you know, now he's stepping up to heavyweight. You know, he knows what he can do. And I always say a really good cruiserweight can beat most heavyweights, not the top tier ones, the big, strong unit ones, but a really good cruiserweight can beat one. And, and I think Lawrence knows that. He thinks he can get away with it. Again, with the people like, like, like uh, um, Dylan White. Going back to this card, we miss, I didn't mention Vidal Riley, one of the cruiserweights as well too against Mikhail Lewal. One of those, uh, he's got the real potential to cross over because of the background that he carries as well too. Do you feel like a win he gets on Sunday really kind of is his breakout fight? Yes, yes. This is this is his, his true test fight on paper. His true test fight in regards to him as a fighter, the professional fighter. This is his next level fight. And this way he is. I remember when, when Lewal boxed Isaac Chamberlain and, and, and Vidal was doing the comms with me. I said, you need to call him out next. That's your next opponent. Even though he lost, you need to call him out next because it'd be good for you. you know, it'll tell you about your development, what you need to do, what you can do, what you're capable of doing. And I think Vidal needs it, that test to, to, to step him up, step his performances up. I actually am more excited about that fight than any fight on the boat.
Going back to the heavyweight, uh, cruiserweight, sorry, division. Uh, Rackport and Billy Smith are still in negotiations, and Rackport is saying that he believes that the fight will happen in London. Is that one edge in the column for Rackport if it happens in London? I do believe it happens. I believe it happens in London because I think it's about time, it's about location, it's about getting somewhere big enough to put it on. Uh, these guys, are, they're in the gym, they're training, they, they've done it once, they'll do it again. Uh, Richard's thinking, I'll finally get my hands uh, on, the, on, on a world title. I've done it again. He needs to stay away from that complacency. He needs to go in there like he did the first time and uh, and have respect, uh, have uh, dogged determination, dogged focus, if he wants the result to remain the same. Very lastly, uh, Canelo Alvarez was asked uh, whether he'd fight David Benavidez and he said he wanted an absurd amount of money to do that. Johnny, when a fighter asks for an absurd amount of money, is that what the public would call a duck? Uh, most fighters, yeah. But Canelo Alvarez is the, the only fighter that can name his price and they're going to pay it. He's got the fan base, he has the TV, he has a following. You're going to pay it. So he knows what he's doing. Um, and, and there's no way he's going to be so transparent and, to, and price himself out of a fight. He's just trying it on. You know, he's trying, it's like Tyson Fury saying, I want half a bill for my next fight. You're going to push up the price. You might not get that, but that's what he's saying publicly. You might get, you know, two thirds of that. Sorry, I knew that was last one, but I realized I forgot something. Ben's case, the appeal uh, went, uh, Conor Ben, the appeal went in, uh, against him. Uh, it seems like that's going to pr protract on even further now. Uh, what do you feel about seeing that announcement of Ben? I'm confused and maybe because I don't know the detail enough of, 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 of Connor. I don't know the detail enough of Dylan White. Why well, Dylan's got clean and, and, and Ben hasn't. I'm confused. But as I said initially, I think Connor, if it had just taken his ban in the first place, it'd have been free to roam now, by now. And I understand what he's saying. I understand what he's at. But this guy's a talented young fighter. And unfortunately, you know, the business is messing up the show. Blue there, Johnny. Real pleasure. Thanks for taking things out. Great t-shirt.